Hello, good evening. Welcome to my third session of these fourth Friday Lives on the Organic Education page. My name is Alice Kimasia. I have been educating my sons outside of school for ooh, over a decade now, along with my husband, Krish. And um, these evening conversations are a chance to explore some of my experience of observing my boys learning outside of school. So I wonder if anyone is joining me this evening. Please say hi in the comments if you are watching. Um, if you click above my video on the organic education page, um, it will put you through to StreamYard and you can give StreamYard permission to see your name, which is really helpful because um, then I can see who it is commenting. Otherwise, it just comes up as a Facebook user, which is a little more impersonal. I can see Naomi's there. Hi, Naomi. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, so, yeah, do pop in the comments if you're watching. It'd be nice to see who's here with me. Um, although these talks are always available on my page to watch back on Catch Up. So last month, February, my husband, Chris, joined me and we were talking unboxing math. And the month before January was all about trust. So if you scroll down my Facebook page, you should be able to find Laura saying there's a loud clicking noise. I can actually hear a really quiet clicking noise. So I'm wondering if it's coming from me, just turning my volume down to see if that helps. If anyone else got a problem with the clicking noise, put it in the comments if you have. Ah, uh, Naomi is saying the same. I wonder what that is. Something here, I wonder. You see, technology is really not my forte. Does that help? Can you hear me then? Or have I gone silent now? Well, Fadzai says she can hear the clicking noise too. I think that might have stopped the clicking noise, but it might also have stopped me. You might not be able to hear me. Just put in the comments if that's any better. I'm not sure what it is. Otherwise, I might have to ask for technical support from my techie team here. Ah, Denise is here. Fadzai, cat. Laura, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, there's still a clicking noise, Sarah's saying. Oh. oh, that's an interesting idea, Laura. Let's close that window. See if that helps. Thank you. It's gone. Yay. We solved it. That's Laura who resolved it for me. Thank you. Because I did have something open to show you later if I've got time. So I'll just open it again when it's time. Fabulous. Can you hear me? I think it stopped. Yes. Good. OK. As long as you can still hear me talking, that's all right. Um, yeah. So I was just saying the former talks. Um, Every fourth Friday, I'm doing a live and they're all available on my Organic Ed page if you want to catch up on ones you've missed. So do scroll down and um, you can watch back um, the Unboxing Maths one from last um, month and the Trust one from January. Brilliant. You all seem to be able to hear me and the clicking has stopped. Hooray. So that's great. Um, so today we're going to talk about writing without coercion. Um, so this is a great subject. Um, Writing was one of the key reasons that I deregistered my boys from school um, ooh, nearly 12 years ago um, because my eldest son, Elias, who was then only seven, was getting very anxious about writing. And he said to me, Mum, either I can write enough in the time that I'm given, but then it isn't neat enough 
or I write it really neatly, but I don't write enough. And either way, it ended up that he was losing his playtime, uh, which was really important to him at that age. Um, well, it's always been important to him, actually, to be outside and active. Um, to all of them, to all of us. So it wasn't a good situation. And um, it was really causing him to become quite withdrawn. Um, and it, it, it brought about quite a change in his demeanor, which was my concern. Um, that was the concern that prompted me really to look at alternative ways of educating the boys. Um, and already he was only seven and he was saying he hated writing. And that just made me really sad because I love writing. Um, it's one of my real passions and I didn't want the boys to hate writing. That just seemed really counterproductive. Um, so, yeah, that was one of the triggers, really, that, that caused me to, to take the boys out of school. And there was such a lot of time in school spent on actually the mechanics of handwriting. And I was kind of thinking ahead and looking at technology and thinking, you know, there's a lot of time being spent on handwriting when actually, even back then, I wasn't spending a great deal of my own time handwriting. Most of my writing even then was being done um, on a computer. And I was thinking, by the time these boys leave school, we're going to have the technology to speak to computers and they will write for us, um, which of course we now have. Um, and even then, I think that technology was there. Um, and it, yes, it just seemed to me that we needed to approach writing differently. Um, and the mechanics of handwriting, what we often call writing, is actually a separate thing from the process of writing, right? which is more of a cognitive process that happens in the brain. Um, it's much broader, isn't it, writing, than just putting your pen to the paper. Um, it's about communi communicating your ideas. Communication, it's a 21st century skill. Um, much broader than, than just the mechanical handwriting skill. Um, so all these thoughts were in my head. And when we started educating the boys from home, I decided to back off on handwriting because it was such a source of stress at that point. Um, and it just led it just led to uh, tears and battles, particularly with Elias. And I just thought, I'm going to just back off and we're going to approach writing quite differently. Um, and I guess it was a bit, it felt like a bit of an experiment, a bit of a risk. Um, but parents still say to me often, they'll say, but how do you get your children to do anything? How do you get your children to do any writing? Um, and I think it's still a source of stress for parents. Um, so I just thought we would talk about it tonight. The tapping sound is back, says Denise. Ah, what is this tapping? We need to get to the bottom of it. There are some other windows over here that my husband's left open, so I'm going to close all those and see if that helps. I hope that I'm not closing things that are important to him. I wonder what it is. It's really faint and it sounds like it's coming from within my computer. I don't know what it is. Let's see if that's better. Um, lost my train of thought now. Yes, so we decided we were going to focus on oral work uh, and enjoying stories and communication, presenting, um, debating and building a broad and varied vocabulary. And um, yeah, I know what I was saying, wasn't I? I was saying about getting our children to do writing. Um, and, you know, you can't really get your children to do anything. You can invite and you can encourage, 
And what I found is that by facilitating where the boys were naturally in their learning and by being able to relax more and go with that flow, I wasn't actually having to get them to do anything. It was more about facilitating what they were already doing. Um, and they had that intrinsic motivation if I was able to observe and to see where that lay and facilitate um, their learning from there. So, um, yeah, I don't know whether writing is something that you battle with in your house with your children, whether it's something that you worry about as a parent. Um, maybe you think maybe, you know, your children aren't doing enough writing if they're not in school. Um, and maybe you're here tonight and your kids are in school, which is great. Welcome. Um, and hopefully you can learn something here about uh, supporting their learning and facilitating their learning um, at home when they're not at school as well. Um, so, yeah, I have this kind of trust, it goes back to January's talk when I was talking about trust. I have this trust that as the boys grew, what was forming in here and coming out of their mouths would eventually flow out from their pen. Um, I think I felt quite strongly that there was there was too much too soon in the early years. Um, that children just need more time to develop those fine motor skills, which underlay their ability to, to write and to form letters. Um, and through play and other activities, we can build those fine motor skills so that writing when they are ready comes, comes more easily. Um, and because we'd lived abroad as well in Turkey, school didn't start until children are seven. And that's true in many countries. Formal schooling anyway doesn't start until children are seven. Um, and so, yeah, maybe that helped me to relax a bit and to just go at the boy's pace and just to give it a little bit more time. Um, so yeah, that was my plan to progress at the child's pace, trusting that by immersing the boys in a literate world, they would want to communicate, they would want to develop their skills to become effective communicators using the tools of our culture. So that was my kind of premise. That was where I was starting from. So I don't know if you've got questions already from what I've said, but do put them in the chat um, if you've got anything to say or to contribute. Um, I'm hoping the tapping sound stopped again. Um, but yeah, it's nice if it's interactive. So yeah, do do put any questions in the in the chat. Um, so. I'm going to talk a bit about my four boys because they're all really, really different. And um, they are the children I have observed most closely. And I will draw out how I went about um, facilitating and inviting them to write. Um, but they were not, not coerced to write through their educational years. It's on and off, but it's okay. We can still hear you first. Well, that's good. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for the update there. Great. Um, so, yeah, my boys are now age 19, almost 18, incredibly, uh, 15, and Stefan just turned nine. Um, so, quite a spread of ages, and they can all write. And they are all quite able communicators. Um, so how did that happen if they were not kind of taught writing or um, coerced in any way to write? Um, I think the first thing to say is that we read lots of stories together always. Um, and I love books. And so we've always had loads of storybooks in our house um, and we would read together. And we often have a, a family kind of read aloud on the go that we would read together over lunch most days when we were at home. And we would discuss stories um, and books that we were reading. Um, and we discussed ideas and we discussed documentaries that we watched and films that we watched. And we gave our opinions very readily. And we debated and argued with each other about those opinions. 
Um, and so they were surrounded by language, right? By rich language. Um, and their vocabularies developed through all of that conversation in which they were immersed. Um, yeah, and let's start with Elias, my eldest son, um, who's 19 now. Now, Elias is an engineer and always had a very strong um, interest and passion in engineering. Um, so he wasn't the keenest of readers growing up. Um, he did read and he came to reading later, really. Um, and I'm trying to think, like the first book that Elias read was um, Cressida Cowell's How to Train Your Dragon. That was the book. I guess probably as parents, we can all think of a book that was the first book that our kids really got excited to read. Um, if they're old enough to have hit that, that milestone. Uh, he was, I um, can't remember how old he was when he, he got there, but um, my two boys who've never been to school, Noah and Zach and the younger two, both became kind of independent readers when they were around age eight. Um, and with Elias, it was How to Train Your Dragon. Um, and he loved that series and was flying with that. Um, and then after that, he, I remember him reading one particular Michael Moore Pergo book that he really loved. He loved listening to audio books. And all of these things you see are full of just amazing, complex language. Um, and then as he got a bit older, the engineering really kicked into play. And he loved the Haynes and the Haynes um, car manuals. Um, so it's more factual information type books. Um, and he still likes those now. Um, and he wasn't keen to write. As I've said, it was a real sticking point for him. Um, and we did just back off. We'd be reading and we would um, do things like we would draw characters from the storybooks. And sometimes they would make like little plasticine figures and replay the scenes. And they would um, often like record their own voices and um, stories. They had those little MP3 players back then. Um, and they would record things. Um, and he read with my dad um, when he was about 11 uh, the story of Robinson Crusoe and it completely grabbed his imagination he just loved it and he started to role play it a lot with his brothers we had Robert, uh, Robinson Crusoe's island in our dining room and our Stefan was a baby then and he was he was put in the boat one of the, the crew um, and they would say whatever we were having for lunch, it was actually roasted tortoise or something that they'd caught on the island. They would imagine all sorts of things around these island adventures. And um, Elias wanted to write a kind of Robinson Crusoe log book journal type thing. Um, and I remember he didn't want to write it by hand. He wanted to write at the computer. That was preferable. And he wanted it to look a certain way. He wanted it to be in columns. And he um, he sat there and wrote. And I remember being staggered um, because this reluctant, reluctant writer, sat, he, he willingly wanted to do something. He had his, his why. He had a purpose in what he wanted to do. Um, and he did it. And, you know, it wasn't bad. And what was interesting about it was... Um, the rich language that he used because he had been immersed in all these amazing stories um, and, and reading books and conversations. Um, and I've learned over the years as well, and this has been a learning process for me, um, from which Zephan, our youngest son, really benefits. Um, I've learned only to critique their written work if they invite it um, and sometimes they will they'll ask for you know are there any spellings there mum that I haven't got right or can you check the punctuation for me um, often now when they're writing at computers of course we've got spell checkers and, and grammar checkers which are really useful um, and I was quite staggered really by what he what he had written and another um, 
time it was very similar really he was I think it was about a year later he was 12 or so and again I found him at the computer writing and he was writing a story about his um, Warhammer army he had these little figures these Warhammer figures which he spent hours painting and then we had one of these gaming stores in town where he would take his army and um, there'd be quite a community down there who would play these Warhammer games. And one of the mentors in there had said that every good Warhammer army needed a good backstory. And so he was busily writing the backstory for his Warhammer army. And there you see is the why again, right? There is the reason to write. It's purposeful, it's got a real world um, purpose that's giving him his why he wants to write. And an authentic audience, right, waiting for this backstory that he was creating. Um, and I found with Elias that was really key, was having a, a purpose and for his writing to be rooted in, in his real world experience. Um, so, for example, he would willingly write thank you letters to people for. Um, birthday presents and things like that. Um, he was very engaged when he was younger with things that were on CBBC and he would send in these kind of engineering designs to various programs that they used to have on. Um, and again, preparing these um, letters, I suppose they were, but they were illustrated um, with designs for different machines and things. Um, gave him again a real purpose and an authentic audience waiting. Um, he did one of those was um, he we had a lovely story because I don't know if you've got the Nature um, Walkers Nature story books they're really lovely um, and there's one about eels strangest of creatures but Elias became fascinated by the eel and the fact that nobody has ever seen eels spawn and die at the bottom of the Sagasso Sea. This just became one of his fascinating fact and um ever the engineer he designed this eel explorer machine that was going to go down into the murky sargasso to see the eels spawning and dying um and we were watching you know david attenborough documentaries or whatever around the same time and so he decided to send this into david attenborough as an idea for david attenborough you know to to have this eel explorer built so he could go down and take us all with him with the film crew to see the eels um so again there was a, there was purpose and reason there was an authentic audience um and he was motivated um and actually he got a lovely letter back from david attenborough isn't that amazing handwritten one really special um so the, these things happened from what he was doing and from his um his his interest his natural uh, point of interest um and elias chose to go into the beginning of secondary school when he was 11 to try that um and i remember once he had chosen to be in school one and a half term holiday he had some um homework given and it was to do with um autobiography and so they had to read some autobiography and and produce some written work over the half term holiday. Um, and Elias just did the bare minimum, bare minimum. And I remember talking to him about it and saying, you know, and trying to kind of interest him in various different autobiographies um, and suggest maybe people he might be interested in. And he said, Mum, I, I, I'm not really interested in this. So I've just, I've done it enough and it, it will do. And um, it was really interesting because I said, um, you know, well, don't you know, don't you want to kind of do your best? And um, and he was like, why, mum, I'm really interested in engineering. I'm not that interested in autobiography. I've, I've, I've done enough of this. I'm, I'm not really interested. And I found myself, <laughs> um, me that always wanted the top grades or whatever, Miss uh, Fragile Perfect, looking for reasons for him to why he needed to do as well as he could on this piece of work. And I was just grasping at things, you know, well, you, you know that you you might get attention or you might get a merit mark if you do it well or I don't think I even verbalized these I was just in my own head thinking through the reasons that I would give myself for doing homework and um 
I just realized how ex how extrinsic they were. Um, and he had articulated to me where he stood on the issue. You know, well, I've, I've kind of done enough to satisfy and I'm not going to spend any more of my time on it. Um, and it was just an interesting insight into him as a learner and how his mind was working. Like there just wasn't the same motivation that I had when I was that age. Um, and I realized actually that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? He's he's listening to his own in, in internal intrinsic motivation. And when his work had purpose for him, he did it ably and he would put um, a lot of effort into, into his work. Um, so it was interesting. And of course, uh, mentoring Elias was my kind of where I broke in my a lot of my old school thinking and uh, had to kind of um, do a lot of unlearning and um, re-evaluating of how we were doing things. Um, so, yeah, he, he taught me a lot and um, he didn't stay in that school for very long. That was um, when he was 11. He, he, he came out again because he wanted to come back to home education. Um, and then he chose to go in again at 14 to do GCSEs and he did GCSE English really with very little formal teaching, English teaching, up to that point. Um, and he had interesting conversations with his English teacher at GCSE. For example, he wanted to have the English um, literature text on audiobook, and he would listen to it on the way into school. Um, and his teacher said, no, really, you need to read it not just be listening to it and he said why because um i'm understanding the story i'm hearing it read it's, um why is this not an equally valid way of accessing this literature um and i think that listening to a lot of audiobooks um meant that he was quite able to read well aloud because he was used to hearing stories um and he he did well in his English GCSE. Um, it was it was kind of amusing. We had a bit of a family joke about it in a way because he he laughed about it because he never would have seen that really as a strong subject. Um, and in the end, it was one of the the subjects that he got one of the highest grades on. Um, and he did well because he's a good communicator. Um, and he also is clever at figuring out what the exam people are looking for, how to kind of play the exam game and work out how to get the, the marks and things like that. Um, so it was interesting. And I know like people worry if we don't do this and lay the good foundations, how are they going to be able to, for example, get a GCSE in English? And we worry so much about um the just in case learning are we doing enough to prepare them for things in the future um and actually when they need it if we've nurtured them to be independent self-directed intrinsically motivated learners they do learn ably and they can learn um what they need to at the, at the time um so yeah that was my my young engineer um and his a bit about his journey. Um, I'm just looking at the comments for a minute. Laura's putting any ideas for fine motor skills for older children would be good. Eli is eight, has fine motor control difficulties, so struggles to write and draw hypermobile fingers and likely dyspraxia. Um, hopefully, some of what I'm saying, Laura, will really help. Um, give you some ideas and things but maybe others as well who are listening have some experience um, of similar issues too and if you you know if you want to um, put any suggestions into the chat for one another please please do that um, and um, make the use of all the wisdom that I know is is gathered here in those of you who are listening um and Naomi says, how did you select your read alouds early on? What influenced your book choices? Oh, that's a great question. Um, do you know, it was sometimes just books that I had loved as a kid. Um, and sometimes it was books that um, friends were recommending or friends had read. Um, my dad sometimes would read things that he really enjoyed with the boys. Um, 
or we would go around um you know current interests so i think the how to train your dragon came out of a um an interest that the boys had at the time in the vikings generally um and then we came across those books um sometimes it's just we we happen to come across a writer and 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 like the writer and then try some more of their books um we heard michael morpurgo speak at a brilliant um kind of live um storytelling session um and so and Noah my third son in particular loved Michael Morpurgo's books um so sometimes it was it was things like that and people that we came across um sometimes it was it was groups online that were recommending things um and we've we've done a real assortment over the years um to be honest of read allows that's another thing perhaps to um to share in the chat that's great there's some ideas coming in now look for for strengthening um, fine motor skills and maybe put your favorite read alouds in the chat as well because that would be really lovely to hear wouldn't it um see what everybody's reading there's there's a few more coming up actually as i talk about the other boys um i mean, i did one of my favorite books when i was a kid was um not till i was about 11 actually but it was anne of green gables and i loved it um and i thought with my four boys they might not really like those books. I don't know why. I just didn't really think it would resonate. And um, the older two were a bit like, mm, it's quite wordy actually as a as a read aloud. But the younger two loved that as a read aloud. They sometimes will try things and um, and we might start something and then they're really not taken with it. And that's okay. We'll put it down and try something else. Um, and uh, often we've they're they're great, just great to have over the lunch table and and just for discussion and. Um, and sharing and audiobooks as well have been brilliant in the car um on car journeys and um my youngest son Zephan is it's the hobbit on audio um has just been amazing and he just lives in a hobbit world he just loves it um and that's interesting because i actually can't read tolkien i find him really difficult to read aloud um so having the audio for that was was amazing um and I, I know that for each boy, I can think of one particular book, was, which was the book that really lit them up and got them inspired about reading. So, yeah, for Elias, it was How to Train Your Dragon. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my son, Joe, now, who is my musical boy. Um, and he wasn't really a keen reader either. Um, he loved graphic novels. Um, he really liked things like Tintin um, and anything with illustrations. Um, and he did, he loved stories, listening to stories. Um, and the book that really took his reading to another level and got him really um, inspired with reading was the Spiderwick Chronicles. He loved those. And we had a kind of journal that went with the books where you drew the different characters. Um, and sometimes there were little, you could write little. Um, it was one of those books where you, like a kind of journal diary thing where you would draw the mythical creatures and then write a bit about their characteristics and so on um, and Joe really liked things like that that were very um, imaginative and he also loved um, kind of mythical worlds um, and things like that um, he liked The Hobbit as well, but Spiderwick Chronicles, he he really enjoyed. And he loved like dressing up, Joe, and acting and role play and all these kinds of things, which of course are developing language, right? And are developing communication skills. Um, maybe your children love puppets for storytelling with. Um, and they're great as well. Yes, Laura, Read Aloud Revival is great for suggestions. Yeah, that's right, on Read Alouds. Uh, what do they do while listening to stories, says Naomi. Um, when we were at home and they were younger, we would we would read over lunch. Um, so I would eat and they would often just be sitting and, and finishing up and I would I would read a chapter. Um, often they will draw um, as they're listening. Um, and often that we do use um, audio in, in the car when we're traveling, which is a great use of the time when you're when you're on the road. Um, that's brilliant, Denise. Thank you. Denise is offering some help there, Laura, with dyspraxia. Um, yeah, so Joe, Joe, role playing and acting things out. And although he was also a reluctant writer, he loved to make like miniature little books. Um, 
and illustrate them. And when I look back at a lot of Joe's writing as a younger boy, it's all illustrated. And what he really loved was the illustrations. And then he would put a little bit of text on things. Um, and I remember when he was about 10, he was doing a lot more illustrated little storybooks. And then he also became interested in communicating online with his friends. Um, and I found that that also was brilliant for um, developing reading and um, typing messages um, on the computer to friends. Again, a great way of practicing different form of communication. Um, and Joe went to a friend's house uh, once a week for a while and did some language work with his friend and his friend's mum because she was quite keen to do um, some sort of kind of like creative writing type work with her son. And they were such great friends that Joe really enjoyed that. Um, I think he is quite a social learner. And so he enjoyed um, kind of collaborating with his friend and producing um, stories together with him. Um, and again, her approach also was, it was very gentle, it was very invitational. Um, and, you know, for some children, that might be something that they really enjoy is creating and writing um, in collaboration with a friend um, or indeed a sibling. And um, yeah, when Joe got to, he also opted into school at 14 to do GCSEs. Um, but for Joe in school, he didn't really find his why. Um, and he was quite overwhelmed by the experience of being in school. Um, and he kind of, he got on all right with English in the classroom, but he kept saying to me, and this was really interesting, that he just didn't know what to say. I, he say, he'd say, I've kind of answered the question in a sentence, and I just don't have anything else to say. I don't know what they want me to write. And he is a man of few words, my Joe. Um, he doesn't waste his words. And he he struggled with that, with kind of finding enough to say. Um, but he did pass his GCSE English second attempt, again, without very much formal um, English education up to that point. Um, and he went to a really lovely um, tutor to who helped him just to jump that hurdle when he wanted to, to pass the exam. Um, and he's now, he's nearly 18 and he's in an internship and he is ably communicating in that internship, um, supporting an online entrepreneur, working with people of all ages, having to connect with them on Zoom and talk to them. Um, they tell me he comes over as a very mature young man. And of course, his his background and his educational journey gave him great experience of communicating with lots of different people, lots of different ages. Um, and he's very technically able, which is what got him the internship. So, you know, he's doing OK. He's an able communicator. Um, just look in the chat again, see what's going on brilliant everyone's just sharing some ideas and thoughts there um yes Sarah's saying mind play with lego while listening to audio yes lego is always a good one isn't it lego is great too for fine motor skills um so let's look at let's think about my noah now noah they're such different characters and they all have such different passions um and noah is uh, somebody who is passionate about sports he's an athlete sportsman um and Noah was my first boy who was completely unschooled he's 15 now and um he was um unschooled in reading writing everything so I found that he as I said a bit earlier really came into independent reading at about the age of eight um and I just became much better at relaxing and facilitating their emergent writing and just being really aware of where they were at and when to um, just, you know, have the right resources around so that they could just reach for them when they were interested in um, beginning to form letters and um, 
just become a bit more interested in more extended writing. Um, and it's about observing closely and being sensitive to those um, that readiness, really. Um, and Noah's left handed and he therefore found writing just a bit more difficult in terms of, um, you know, just getting it to flow and being able to put the paper in the right position and so on. It's a bit more awkward. Um, and he much prefers to write at a computer. Um, and again, when Noah was about 12, he was sat at the computer and he wanted to write an extended essay. We didn't know it was going to be extended essay until he got going with it, but uh, <laughs> he wanted to produce a big piece of writing about Andy Murray's career, Andy Murray being his great hero. Um, and he sat and it was over several days, he sat and wrote this amazing piece of writing about um, the life and career of, of Andy Murray. And from there, he developed quite an interest in sports journalism. Um, and he was making YouTube videos, um, filming and editing and commentating on um, his tennis and his, his friends playing tennis. Um, all of which is about communication, right? And um, he's, he's very good at film editing. Um, and all these skills, you know, they're, they're all building a communicator. Um, and he had this interest in sports journalism. And so he wanted to join a kind of little online writing group when the opportunity came up. Um, and not long after that, he decided to join um, a kind of English study tutor group online um, at, at his own request. And so he's become somebody who's really quite a keen writer, which is really lovely for me to see. And he doesn't have any obstacles about about writing um and i found now this year he's he's uh, 15 so he's now in year 10 and he's kind of building his study skills at the moment as he's getting used to working towards um some gcse qualifications um again which he wants to do so we've got that intrinsic motivation um and we find that the mindset that he has honed through his sports and on the tennis courts is coming into its own now with pushing through obstacles and learning the study skills that he needs to um, to succeed in studying for his GCSEs. And he's got that why, you see, he's got that purpose and that drive. Um, and so it's lovely to me that um, he was really the boy who is the keenest uh, um, writer so far um polly is commenting hi polly my two are coming up to 10 now reading and writing is coming along but slow getting dyslexia assessment this year just starting to worry now really want them to discover the joy of reading books yeah it's interesting isn't it how i hear that some um you know some children come to independent reading much later when when um the pressure is not on them to hit these milestones at certain ages and of course some children read very young i don't know if anyone else on the chat has any experience with um with dyslexia who might be able to um comment there and um offer polly any support and encouragement um i know that for zephan he's zephan's writing has really sorry zephan's reading has really come along um even just in the last year um, and it's interesting how it's never linear, right? It's never like this. It just, it seems to, that you can't see much obvious progress for a while. And then there'll suddenly be a great leap and then it will plateau for a while. Um, it's much more kind of all over the place than the linear path that we might expect to see. Um, for Zephan, it's been all about comics. Um, and ordering him a comic over lockdown has really been interesting and I've, I've really seen his enthusiasm for reading um take off um so yeah Naomi is saying slow here reading with my son and so resistant to writing yeah um I'm going to talk a little bit about about Zephan who's Zephan's just turned nine um and he's a really he's 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 very interested in technology and is is um 
a bit of a digital wizard, really. Um, and through lockdown, what I've seen is his communication online just um, accelerate hugely, um, communicating with his friends online. Um, of course, as I said, he reaps the benefit of all my acquired wisdom over many years, which meant means I'm much more able to relax with him and to um, just observe and to just go much slower, um, watching for that emergent writing, which often shows itself, I remember, with Noah and Zephan in um, wanting to um, leave me little notes around the house, just funny little notes I'd find with little zigzags and scribbles and slowly we began to see words forming on pictures. I remember with Zephan, it was, he loves drawing characters and always has, and it was, um, the characters slowly began to have names like Bob and Ben, and you sort of see a B appearing. Um, and slowly, slowly, um, as I would see those kinds of little signs of emergent writing, um, just encourage in that direction gently. Um, we did have some of those simple word cards on the shelf, very accessible. And Zephan loved it. What well, he'd get those out and sort of make sentences with words. And um, he enjoyed making really silly sentences and then making extra words to put in to make them silly. Um, and just playing with words like that and letters. Um, when when I saw that um, readiness emerging. Um, Zephan had a year where there was really, I don't think, any interest in letters and words at all. It was He was all about numbers for quite a long time. Um, and, um, and then he almost like switched away from the numbers as if he'd kind of like done enough of that for now and then was switching over and, and began to draw um, and used to spend a lot of time drawing. Um, and building up his fine motor skills through drawing long before then patterns began to appear, which then later became letters and words. So it was, I could see a progress, um, but it was it, the lessons that I had learned about just being able to relax and observe and support and facilitate um, were really valuable and just gently encouraging him. Um, he liked to write um, it, he would write our family letters, just the first letters of our names. Um, and then from there, his own name, and he would sign cards and things like that. Again, real purpose um, and, and write thank you notes. Um, at one point, it was labelling things around the house, chair and sofa, things like that, and sticking labels on things. I guess that's a stage in understanding that things have a written Association, associated label um, and he was very interested in that in in the word that was associated with the thing um, and then he would write cards and then as as it developed he wanted to write a bit more postcards um, and birthday invites and things like that um, but I used to do a lot for all the boys a lot of scribing for them so that we could record their own stories before they were able to write them for themselves um, and just facilitating that because I think one of the problems for the boys particularly was all the ideas that they had up here and just the frustration of not being able to get that down onto the paper fast enough I think that's the problem that Elias was having way back at school when he became so anxious um, and so you know being willing to scribe for them and giving them a means of recording their own stories um, orally um to take that frustration out of the mix so that the ideas that are up here can flow out um is really helpful um and yeah just finding different ways to to capture those stories and and ideas um even if the mechanics are coming more slowly um, and have, being able to have that bigger picture of what writing entails, I think, is is really helpful in that process. Um, so, yeah, I was going to show you, I wonder if I can, if we've got time, I'm just very quickly going to show you a, a kind of piece of project work that um, 
Zephan did, which shows the facilitation of writing quite nicely and the way that you could mix it up a bit with, with um, things that they're interested in. Um, this is new to me, screen sharing on StreamYard, so we'll see if it works. Um, let's have a look. Um, I hope we don't get that clicking back. Uh, let's just see if I can open it and then I can share. Uh, oh, that's kind, Denise. Denise has put there, we are a dyslexic, dyspraxic family. If anyone would like advice, Denise has got a lot of experience there. So um, if anyone wants to connect with Denise, she's there in the chat offering. Holly, they really want to read and write. They try so hard. Yeah, you're getting a dyslexia assessment, you say. Yeah. That's good. Um, and it's good, I think, because at least at home you're able to, you know, go ha not have that pressure and just support them in developing all these a very rounded um, communicative set of skills without the pressures um, to produce a lot of writing in a short space of time. Uh, right. See if I can, let's see if I can screen share. This will be interesting. Share screen. Right. You guys tell me if you can if you can see that. Can you see that? I hope you can. Um so this is just an example of something that I did with Zeppelin and it, I don't know, it might give us all some ideas that are good ways to facilitate writing activities. Um this is a, a character that Zephan created because he loves to create characters. And so I wonder, um, maybe if you think about your own children and their particular um, passions and switches and what they love to do, maybe there's a way, maybe they could make a little faster scene figure or they're playing with a puppet or, um, I don't know, you're making some kind of um, fun collage with a character or it could be anything. Yep, can see it. Thank you, Naomi. That's brilliant. Um, and Zephan loves mythical worlds and wizards, and he drew this this character, a wizard named Ku. And he started telling me all about this wizard and where he lived, and he gave me some words that describe this wizard. And so, you know, we talked about all the adjectives and words that describe him. And I said, Zephan, you're talking all about where this um, where this character lives can you tell me all about that and so i wrote it down as he described it describing for him because there's no way he would have been able to write as much as that um but he had so many ideas about it right and there was all this detail about ku's cave at the seaside and um it was very vivid in his imagination and so i i scribed it for him this lovely long description um and you, i mean you don't really have to read it but it's a cave by a beach and there's all the different um furniture inside and so on and the way that ku earns his money by fishing and um because i know he loves minecraft it was then a kind of natural progression that he would go and he wanted to create ku's world in minecraft and so he did that. And I'll just play you a little bit of it because, of course, he is presenting this to us, to me, to his brothers, telling them all about where Ku lives. Can I play it? I don't think I can on shared screen, which is odd. That's OK. It doesn't matter. The, um, the Minecraft um, world contained all the detail of his description that he'd given me. Um, creating all the furniture and everything that he had written about or that I ascribed to him in, in Minecraft. And as he, he made this little video which shows you around the cave, so he's describing it. So again, this is all language work and, um, you know, descrip description. Um, oh, it is going to play now. I don't know if you'll hear the audio, though. We don't need to listen to all of it. 
but you can see the detail of it. Me sitting in it. Oh, talking. Anyway, we have the big TV, the frig freezer, the pizza oven with the fire. Next, we have the bathroom. Oh, it's not sharing well. I won't worry about it. But um, yeah, again, communicating okay to an audience, um, and he and of course loved creating that um, in Minecraft and sharing that with us. Um, so I said, you know, what, what does, what's Clue's life like? You know, do you want to write a story about him? And because he was just so engaged in this, he, he said, yes, he would write a story on his iPad. Um, again, using the technology rather than paper, but he did this kind of first draft and um, he laid it out interestingly, kind of rather like a poem. Um, and he was really engaged with this. Um, again, this is a boy that's not, he, he really is not an enthusiastic writer. Um, it's occasional that you get, you get something like this from him. Um, but he wrote this, this whole story um, about Koo and this stranger in black who'd come to his door. Um, and he brought it to me. He said, Mum, I've written this story. And he was very proud of it. And asked me um if his if there were any spellings that needed attention in it um and there weren't many i think i've put there i've corrected sure which he had he'd misspelled um but i commented on it i said oh it's really lovely descriptive story um and the way you've read, laid it out is interesting it looks kind of rather like a poem um and i said do you want to write it out more like in the books that we read and he said yes and um i said do you want some help with the kind of commas and capital letters and things and he said yes so this is over several days by the way this is not all in one day this is an ongoing kind of piece of project work so we sat together and we did this second draft which is basically just rearranging his words um and I love the way that they write and the description in it and the kind of vocabulary that they're using and the richness of it um, and the way that it's it's just such a Zephan story. Um, it, it, you know, it's a, it's another mythical world. Um, and he was just so open to it. And then to show you how you can extend these kinds of things into projects, he loves um animation Zephan and for ages he'd been wanting to build um a proper figure to animate a little armature thing um and so he said let's get the armature thing out and I will make who the character with my my armature so that we can animate the story um and so he spent a lot of time making this beautiful figure of Ku really a, a lot of time with great um, intrinsic motivation and we have Koo. Um, and he said the story was going to be animated right now this is a some time ago that he did the story and the animation and Zephan has a list of ongoing projects and the coup animation remains on the project list. Um, so this is a kind of ongoing thing. And periodically he'll say to me, oh, I still haven't done the coup animation. And I'll say, no, why? What is the stumbling block there? What, what's the um, what's holding you up? What are you stuck on? Um, and he hasn't quite yet found the way that he wants to animate the figure. Um, and I think because the figure's really special, he really wants to do a good job. So watch this space, because if we do manage to animate you and bring the story to life, I will um, I will share it on my page. Um, but the good thing about that example is the way that um, the writing is embedded in a bigger project, which enables Zephan to learn through his particular um, passions and switches. There's Minecraft in there. There's animation and um, creating characters, which is the thing that he, he really loves to do um, a lot of the time. Um, so I think for me, um, 
that's that's the key and to trust to trust the process that facilitating learning in that way and supporting the child learning at their own pace without fear without the panic and the worry that they're not going to get where they need to be is really key um because they will with your support and gentle encouragement um I'm going to read some of the comments here to finish up. Dawn, hey Dawn, my second youngest was a self-taught reader and writer. He reads hours a day. He loves it. My second youngest is dyslexic, but has a lot of creative ideas. I do scribe for her at times to help her get those incredible ideas out. She can read, but the writing is slower coming. Yeah. Yeah, and do, and scribe, you know, being that scribe when they need it is is still so important, isn't it? When when the actual production of the writing is is such a frustration. Um, and Dawn goes on to say, Kevin loves to do characters as well. That's totally his thing. The mythical and wizard world as well, and warriors. His writing usually is based on these ideas. Yeah, that's that's interesting too, right? So he's another person who you can use that um, that strong switch for character creation to to. Um, encourage encourage writing my youngest is a self-taught reader and writer my second youngest is dyslexic and can read but does need to scribe to get her ideas out yeah brilliant so yeah i'm an hour's gone by just like that it goes by and a month goes by so quickly as well these um events creep up on me um but does anyone else have any any questions or anything else that you would like to to add to our conversation um i don't think anyone put their favorite what's your favorite read aloud i don't think people have put those in um my boys did love the narnia books they make great read alouds some of my favorites um tom's midnight garden we enjoyed um we just read one recently the boy at the back of the class which is about a syrian refugee boy it was a good read aloud Naomi says, OK, so my son made up his own recipe for some cupcakes and wanted me to write it down as he invented it. I secretly wish he'd write it, but scribed anyway. Yes. So just go with the flow. Yeah, I would recommend it because the problem is when we want them to write it and then we show that kind of. Um, it's almost like we, we, we want more from them and they know that we've got this expectation and kids pick up on that, don't they? And then they just feel like discouraged as if she wants me to write again and it kind of takes the joy out of the moment and what he's doing there is he's creating right? he's creating a recipe and he's he's enjoying the the process of of um of baking and making this recipe um so yeah i think that was right that was right Naomi, to scribe for him and support him in that yeah and um and you're modeling you know yeah look we write it down here we go you show um and he'll get there the wild robots is there. Yeah, we like that one too. Um, and Zeppelin's just got the wild robots escape. We haven't read that one yet, but that's a good one. Charlie Bohm was a favourite book series for you to read aloud a few years back. Says Dawn. Wizards of Once. Yes, we've just read the third one of those. That's a lovely series. We like Crescent and Decal. Farewell Children, Moomins. Oh, great. There's loads of loads of lovely suggestions coming in for read alouds. That's great. Um, Anyway, I think what else we've read recently? The Boy at the Back of the Class. Um, we're reading at the moment, we're reading one of a book of short stories about um, dragons, I can't remember what it's called, um, with Zephan. Um, yeah, but Read Aloud Revival is a good, that's a good place to look for Read Aloud, as well as just people's recommendations online. Um, yeah, so uh, an hour's gone by, guys. So it's been really nice to um, have you join me live. Thank you. Please put in the chat as well if there's a particular um, topic that you would like me to cover on one of these monthly lives. And I'm quite happy to listen to suggestions. Um, and I thought one month I might try and get my um, my eldest son, Elias, to come and join me um, as a young engineer. Uh, unschooled and um, maybe if you've got other suggestions for guests and topics I would love to hear them um, but it's really it's been nice to hang out with you and um, 
yeah, thank you for, for commenting and supporting one another in the chat. And I will look forward to seeing you all next month. Oh, Denise, there's still book recommendations coming in. I love it. Paddington and How to Train Your Dragon. Yes, good suggestion, Denise. Thank you. Good to see you all. See you soon.